Hi there. This session is the equations of constant acceleration. It's part of the A-level physics mechanics. This PowerPoint is for students who are new to this. If you've done this at school, you may you can look through it if you want, just to do some practice, some quick fire practice. But you may wish to do the next PowerPoint, which is on projectile motion, which is much more vigorous. So let's begin. So the objectives are to recall the equations of constant acceleration and to solve basic equation of constant acceleration problems. So let's have a look. So the equations of uniform acceleration, these are on your data sheet as well. So first of all, we need some notation. V is final velocity. U is the initial velocity. A is acceleration. T is time. And S is displacement. Remember, displacement is just distance with direction. So the first equation is V equals U plus AT. The second one is V squared equals U squared plus 2AS. Then we've got S equals a half U plus V times T. And S equals UT plus half AT squared. These equations work for constant acceleration. Let's look at an, an example then. And I'll show you how to do it. So when you get a question, you think, hmm, that looks like equations of motion. What you have to do is write down, or what I would do, is to write down SUVAT. And the reason we write SUVAT is so we can establish what we know and which equation to use. If you haven't already, you should write the equations down. So go back, rewind the video, write the equations down, and then come back here. So calculate the final velocity of a car that accelerates at 2 meters per second squared from an initial velocity of 3 meters per second for 5 seconds. So let's write down what we know. We know the acceleration of the car is 2 meters per second squared. So I'm just going to write 2. The initial velocity is 3. And so U is 3. That's the initial velocity. For a time of 5 seconds. And it wants the final velocity. So we don't need this. But we need this. So the thing that you need, call it the letter. And the thing you don't need, just put a cross to it. So what that means is that we need an equation that's not got S in it. But has got V in it. So the equation is V equals U plus AT. So that process helps you select which equation you need to use. And then we just put our numbers in. So V is equal to U, which is 3, plus 2 times 5. And 2 times 5 is 10. So the velocity is 13 meters per second. Okay. Let's do some more examples. So try this one if you wish. Same technique. I'll show you how to do it now. So question two, calculate the stopping distance of a car that is decelerated at 2.5 meters per second squared from an initial velocity of 20 meters per second. So let's write SUVA. You could think really actually that the car, that's my car I'm afraid, it looks like a toy train. So it's moving this way, but decelerating in the opposite direction. So let's see what happens. So write SUVAT, then write down all the quantities that we know. So we need stopping distance, so I'll call that S. Decelerate, so the deceleration is minus 2.5 meters per second squared. Initial velocity is 20 meters per second. And so at first glance, you might look at this and think, well, we're missing something. And well, the the stopping distance, so obviously the final speed is zero. Then we need an equation without t in it. So that would be v squared equals u squared plus 2as. And we need to rearrange to get s, the displacement. So it's v squared minus u squared divided by 2a. And that would give you s. So let's put our numbers in. So v is 0. And then we've got minus 20 squared. So 20 squared is 
400, so it's minus 400 divided by two lots of minus 2.5, so minus 5. So the minuses cancel, and 400 divided by 5 is 80 meters. Okay, let's have a look at the next one. Have a go at this if you want. So an aircraft lands with an initial speed of 45 meters per second and comes to a halt in 900 meters. Calculate the deceleration. So same again. That's right, super. So the displacement, 900 meters. The initial speed is 45 meters per second. The final velocity comes to a halt. So that'd be zero. You don't have to write the units when you write this out. Sometimes I just do it from habit, sometimes I don't. Doesn't matter. Deceleration is what I'm looking for. I'm looking for acceleration. Time, we could find it, but not interested. So again, V squared equals U squared plus 2AS. And this time, rearrange to find A. So that's V squared minus the U squared divided by two lots of S. So V squared is zero, then we've got minus 45 squared divided by two lots of 900. So that would be 45 squared divided by 1,800. Put that in your calculator, see what you get. Sorry, there's a minus there because it's slowing down. It will be minus 1.1. Meters per second squared. So that is the deceleration or the negative acceleration, but because it abstracts for deceleration, you could just write the deceleration is 1.1 meters per second squared. The negative just tells us that it is slowing down. Okay, let's have a look at the next one. So attempt this one, and I'll take you through the answer. A stone is dropped from the edge of a cliff if it accelerates at 9.81 meters per second squared and reaches the bottom after 1.5 seconds, calculate the height of the cliff. So first of all, we just write super. Then we fill our data in. So it's a stone, well, I'll just, I'll draw a little, this is my cliff. And we drop a stone downwards. So we'll take down as positive. So the displacement is what we're looking for, S. The initial speed, now if it's dropped from the edge of the cliff, the initial speed is actually zero meters per second. The final velocity, not interested. The acceleration due to gravity is 9.81 meters per second squared. And the time is 1.5 seconds. So we need an equation without V in it. So S equals UT plus half AT squared. And what you should realize is that the U is actually zero. So this is zero. So the displacement is a half times A times time squared. So let's put our numbers in. So 0 0.5 times A, which is 9.81, times 1.5 squared. Put that in your calculator. So S would equal 11 meters. Okay, let's move on. So question four, attempt this one, please. Calculate the time taken for a car to accelerate uniformly from five meters per second to 12 meters per second over a distance of 30 meters. So for this one, let's write Suva. So displacement is 30 meters. The initial speed is five meters per second. The final velocity is 12 meters per second. The acceleration, not interested. And T time is what we're looking for. So this one, there's no acceleration. So what we need to use is the S equals a half U plus V times 10. 
rearrange the time, put the numbers in, so S is 30, times it by 2, so 60 equals, and then U plus V is 17, times time. So time would simply be 60 divided by 17, which is 3.5 seconds. Okay, let's move on. A couple more to do. So question 5. If you want to attempt this one, please do. So a ball is thrown upwards against gravity with an initial speed of 8 metres per second. What is the maximum height reached by the ball? So let's see if you got this one correct. So the ball's thrown upwards, so let's take up as positive this time. Let's write Suva. So S is the maximum height that we're looking for. So the initial speed thrown upwards is 8 metres per second. The final speed, now what you need to think about is that the, fin the final speed is when it's at the maximum height, when it's about to change direction. So it's actually obviously stopped moving. Acceleration is due to gravity uh, and it acts, the gravity acts down, which is opposite direction to what we took as positive. So that would be minus 9.81 meters per second squared and that's very important time we could find out but we're not interested in this case so to get displacement we need an equation without time so that would be v squared equals u squared plus 2as so let's find s so v squared minus u squared divided by 2a let's put our numbers in so v is zero so it's minus 8 squared so it's 8 squared is 64, so negative 64, divided by 2 times the acceleration, so minus 9.81, so that's minus 19.62. Put that in your calculator, and we get 3.3 meters. Okay, well done if you got that one. All right, let's move on. Oh, interesting this one. So if you want to have a go at it, please do. Okay, let's have a look. So a car travelling at 100 kilometres per hour slams the brakes on and stops in 55 metres. Calculate the rate of deceleration and the amount of time taken to stop. So the first problem that we've got is the 100 kilometres per hour. We need to be able to convert that. Some of you may have done that successfully. I'm going to show you a method though. And then a quick way of doing it. So 100 kilometers per hour, let's deal with this first, is 100 kilometers, which is 1,000, divided by an hour. So the 100,000, sorry, is a meet, the amount of meters in 100 kilometers. Now we need to divide by the amount of seconds in one hour to get us seconds. So the amount of seconds in an hour is 60 times 60, which is 3,600. So let's divide by 3,600 seconds. So we took the 100 kilometers per hour and changed it into 100,000 meters per 3,600 seconds. So if we put that in our calculator, 100 kilometers per hour is 27.7 recurring meters per second. So 27.7 recurring meters per second. So let's just get rid of that. 27.7 recurring meters per second. Okay. So calculate the rate. Of, so let's write down what we know. So let's do SUVA. So the car stops in 55 meters. The initial speed is 100 kilometers per hour, which is the 27.7 recurring. The final speed sums the brakes on and stops. So the final speed is zero. The acceleration is what we're looking for, and the time. So to get acceleration, we need an equation without time. So that would be v squared equals u squared plus 2as. And then rearrange to get a. So that would be v squared minus u squared divided by 2s. So minus 22.7 recurring squared divided by 110. So that will give us the acceleration, which is 4.7 meters per second squared. 
and there's a negative, which just indicates that it's negative acceleration. So the deceleration is the 4.7. Then let's find time. So time would easily be V equals U plus A2. And we need time. So V minus U divided by A. So V minus U divided by A. So minus 22.7 divided by the acceleration. So minus 22.7 divided by the acceleration of minus 4.7. We shouldn't really round that acceleration up. We should use the full value of 4.6844. So if you've got that in your calculator, that's fine. But it's not an exam question, so it's okay for this example. Pop that in your calculator. And we get 4.8 seconds. Now I checked that with the rounded up number and the whole number, and they both round to 4.8, so that's okay. All right, let's have a look at the next one. So a woman sprints at 10 meters per second and reduces her speed to five meters per second. She travels a distance of 20 meters during this change. Calculate how long she took. So same as always, if you want to have a go, please do so now. Okay, I'll take you through it. So let's write Suva. Let's fill our data in. So displacement is 20 meters. The initial speed is 10 meters per second. The final speed is five meters per second. Acceleration, don't need. T time is what we're looking for. So we could use an equation without acceleration, which would be S equals a half U plus V times time. And then let's rearrange to find T. So it's S, so 2S, which is 40, equals U plus V, which is 15, times time. So time would simply be 40 divided by 15, which is 2.6 recurring, which rounds to 2.7 seconds. Okay, good stuff. Let's move on. This is just extra practice if you wish. I won't be going through these, but I will share the answers. So if you want to have a go at them, please pause the video and have a go now. And then I'll reveal the answers. So you should do the question quantities and then the other blank quantities. So the, the first question marks are as follows. And then calculate the other quantities. Okay, so that's the basics for the equations of motion for constant acceleration. I hope you found that useful. Take care and I'll see you soon.